So it is April 15th, and uh, there's a little secret we're gonna show you. Just looks like a normal creek, right? Uh, got, a, got a road over it, this is Butte Creek, uh, but we think there's more to this creek than meets the eye, and we're gonna go check it out in a little bit. Um, we're actually driving over the migration route for Spring Run Chinook Salmon. We just saw a couple uh, big, beefy sea creatures that are coming up right now. And they're gonna head upstream, and they're gonna wait and spawn in the fall. Uh, this is why you tr always travel with a mask uh, and a GoPro. So we're going to get in this pool just out here in suburbia Chico. Uh, and we're going to get in this pool and we're going to see if there's any monsters from the ocean uh, lurking beneath this bridge. In our previous episode, we reviewed the life cycle of Chinook salmon in California. And we also learned there are multiple runs or races of Chinook salmon in California. The name signifies when the salmon is migrating up the watershed. Spring run Chinook salmon that we're gonna learn about in the next few episodes, they migrate upstream in the spring, but they still spawn in the fall. Spring run Chinook um, typically live three to four years and spend about two years feeding in the ocean and they return to spawn in the spring months. That's Matt. We're going to be tagging along with Matt off and on for the next several episodes. Matt knows a lot about spring run Chinook and he spent his entire career managing wild fish populations. Um, they hold in the upper watershed for five to six months before spawning in late September or early October. They all hold in this area right here all summer long. That's Alan. We'll be chatting with Alan off and on for the next few episodes. Alan knows a lot about spring run Chinook salmon. He's also letting us access his private property where he proudly stewards both holding and spawning habitat for threatened spring run Chinook salmon. So they arrive in like mid midsummer like that, July-ish? Uh, they actually start coming up in March and April. Okay. It all depends on the flows and you know, sometimes when the high flows you think they're gonna just run right up, they hang back and wait till May to come up. But you know, generally the water gets clear enough to where we can see them around the first of May. Okay. Is this a, is this a holding pool? Yeah, you would see Spring Run Chinook holding in this pool in the summertime. What time of year would they get here? We're approximately 50 miles from the Sacramento River. They would be arriving at Upper Falls uh, as early as June, okay. perhaps May, and, and waiting here until late September, early October to spawn. When we say the spring run Chinook salmon are holding over, this is exactly what we mean. In this pool behind me, there's what? Like, what do you think? 150, 200 fish? <laughs> and they're jumping, right? These massive ocean fish have come up here a couple months ago and they're just hanging out right now. They're hanging out for like six months to spawn in the fall and die and pass on their genes to the next generation of fish. These spring run Chinook aren't actually feeding and in fact they'll be living off their fat reserves alone for the next four or five months. The jumping is probably some sort of dominance behavior, they're chasing each other around, developing those hierarchies for the upcoming spawn. But what if it's not? What if it's joy? Joy at coming home to those cool mountain streams. Nice flippers. Thanks. <laughs> so one thing too, you know, don't get me wrong, like swimming with these is gonna be a minimal disturbance, but one of the reasons that we're doing this is we wanna show you the scale of how big these fish are. 
we've been filming them and we will continue to film them in this project and it's kind of hard to tell how big they are hopefully when i'm out there i'll give a little proportion to how big these fish are they're just hanging out way up here you know 200 miles from the ocean for the next six months we want you to love them and fall in love with them just like we have that was awesome i fish jumped National Park. Uh, I've done a few of the things where I've had a chance to see some pretty neat North American wildlife. Uh, but for, for California, that might be the top of experience. I could have stayed in there all day and swam around. Um, obviously, there's a couple laps. I don't want to disturb them. They're going to be sitting in here for another four or five months. It's this ability for the Spring Run Chinook to come up from the ocean, hang out here for six months that separates them from the other races of Chinook salmon in California. Um, and it makes them actually genetically different. So they're able to come up here in the springtime with a heavy snow melt. Then they hold over, like we talked about before, for months. Then when they're spawning up here in the upper watershed in September, the fall run are spawning lower down. They can't make it up here by September the water's way too shallow downstream. And so that's what keeps the spring run and the fall run low in the watershed, two different species. And it also is the reason why we think this is like the coolest fish story around. Like, I mean, how cool are these fish? And you can see how big they are just hanging out here. Um, I don't know, I'm at a loss for words, it's rare. Seeing adult salmon that have come back to the ocean into a small body of fresh water like this is um, incongruous. You, you kind of, you really do a double take um, seeing this big, it's an ocean creature back in its, it, its place of birth. Um, so you're swimming down the creek and you go into a pool and suddenly you're surrounded by hundreds of 10 to 20 pound salmon. It's, uh, it's thrilling to say the least. That in itself makes Spring Run very unique for Chinook salmon. This sexual immaturity, this long residence time in fresh water. And that long residence time is so that these fish can reach high elevation spawning habitat. They enter fresh water sexually immature because they're they're at the start of a journey in fresh water. To get here, they've, we're at about 3,600 feet in elevation. They've climbed up Deer Creek from the valley floor at about 300 foot elevation through a con basically a continuous series of boulder gardens, rapids, small waterfalls, and cascades. So they're a truly athletic fish and that, that immaturity allows them that athleticism. Um, they come into fresh water, they're not burdened with, with ripe eggs. Um, they have very small eggs. They have a lean, physically fit body. So they're making jumps and charging rapids for about 50 miles to access this cold water habitat. Spring Run Chinook need to penetrate high up, high into high elevation into cold water habitat to complete their life cycle. So that triggers them to reach sexual maturity. The, the right. They yeah. They come in sexually immature. They need time to reach sexual maturity in fresh water, and that time has to be spent in cold water. Okay. And cold water in California happens at high elevation. Cold water, high elevation, that's the problem. That type of habitat, that upper pool, that upper cool water watershed, 
all now lies behind dams. Ah, dams! Damn dams. All right, remember this graphic from last episode? This is the current Fall Run Chinook habitat. And here is the former Fall Run Chinook habitat. That sucks. They've lost some habitat. Now check this out. This is the current Spring Run Chinook habitat. Okay. And let's look at the historic Spring Run Chinook habitat. My God. That's 90% of the habitat has been cut off due to dams. And again, that's because these fish are coming upstream in the spring so they can reach higher in the watershed. The higher in the watershed they can reach, that's now been cut off because of dams, the less habitat they currently have. In fact, there's only three creeks, three independent populations of spring run Chinook salmon left in California. Deer Creek, undammed. Mill Creek, also undammed. And here, on Butte Creek. Now that we've seen uh, the fish holding over, we are super excited to come back here in the fall and see these same fish finally get a chance to, to add their genes to the next generation. Um, this many fish, I, uh, I don't know. I think the, fawn, uh, I think the spawn is gonna be super cool when we come back. Where the Wild Roam is hosted by Joe Flannery. My grandfather was a park ranger. My parents were both park rangers. I was the third generation. I've been lucky enough to spend my entire life outdoors, learning and working in conservation. And I'm excited to share that knowledge with you. With Kyle Lancaster. Lately, we've been getting into conservation filmmaking. We believe that a conservation ethic begins with education and understanding. Never stop learning about the natural world. And hey, if you like the show, please support, share, subscribe, follow, like, and all that stuff. Let's start a movement that prioritizes wildlife, wild places, and conservation within our daily lives.